Right, well, in the last painting we did, I showed you uh, some mountain scenes, some hill scenes, with the mist in between, using a traditional method of doing glazing. So I worked them up with dropping down washes gradually, graduated washes and variegated washes, let those dry, lifted out a bit, and then dropped in glazes over the top, which were also variegated. Uh, this time, I'm going to do it a bit more freshly, the way that I prefer, the more looser way, although I tend to use both the methods. I prefer to be fresher and be more direct and uh, try and get the more immediate effects, fresher effects, which I don't think are quite as laboured. Um, so this time we're doing another scene which has hills in it and uh, this time I'm going to drop in all the clouds down and put in the, um, the hills behind by dropping them into those clouds and letting the effects blend together. Um, then I'm going to just drop some of the little holes in the clouds so you're seeing through them to the hills back in carefully and timing is so important with watercolour. Um, it's, I can teach oils and acrylics and pastels fairly easily in the fact that it's step by step, you do one thing, you do the next and something happens. But with the, with the watercolours it's much more controlled accident and timing is so important with watercolour. You tend to find that uh, only by knowledge and by trying and by exploring and by becoming looser, which you've already seen in watercolours, that it really works for you. And it's knowing the feel of the watercolour, it's knowing just when it's dry enough to drop a colour in and how far it'll spread or how far it's going to blend. So, um, or how much pigment even to put into painting. An important thing with the last painting was how I did aerial perspective and how I used thinner paint in the background and made more pigment as it came forward into the foreground to make the colours deeper and stronger. How I used linear perspective by doing texture in the foreground and going out of focus into the background. So we've got the two aerial perspective and linear perspective. So we've got also warm, cooler, cooler, cooler. So it's warmer colours in the foreground and mainly cooler colours in the background. So we've got all of these little things like baking a cake, the good recipe for making a standard painting. Doesn't mean to say that things can't change. I mean, for instance, with a sunrise or a sunset, we've got warm colours in the background, cool in the foreground. So they do opposite. Right, so in this one, a lot uh, looser and working much more directly with the painting. Um, I'm also going to do some splattering with it. Light paint, a paint paint. Uh, last time we saw how to use masking fluid, this time we're going to be using white paint over the top and not masking fluid. Okay, so in this picture the first thing I want to do is to paint the um, light area here of the clouds. And I'm going to do that by putting again water in. Just plain water on it, and then I'm going to put some uh, aureolian yellow in, a nice cool yellow, and then drop in a little bit of the warmer yellows and a bit of pinks. And we'll gradually work our way down to these colours here, these areas here, blobbing these areas on, and then I'll be able to drop in some of the darks in between and around and bring this down wet into wet and gradually add these colours softly wet into wet into the background. So the whole thing here is going to be wet into wet. Let that dry, then we can start working these colours over the top. So the first thing to do then is to wet the whole of this sky because I'm going to put this dark tree over the top here. If you're not sure whether it's wet, look along your paper and you can see it's shiny, but make sure that you don't leave any areas that you want to cover because you'll get a sudden dry edge there, unless you don't want those areas to be covered, of course. Right, so I was saying about the Oriolian yellow, which is one of my favourite yellows, a beautiful, cool yellow, and I want a very thin coat of that, so I'm just going to drop some of those in here, and it doesn't need much. I only want sort of tints today, so I'm going to put it really, really light up here. Right, I'm a little bit warmer, so I'm going to take a little bit of the um, warmer yellow, my uh, raw sienna in this case, just to tint a bit of that in, just against that lovely lemon yellow. Sun's suddenly come out now, and it's it's. Um, through me a bit because I can't film if the sun's on the paper for you. Right, so we're just dropping in these bits of cobalt violet. Got to do this while it's still wet. And then even a touch of, a little touch of cerulean going on. So it's lovely, really look for the colours. These soft colours going on down to here. Right, now I've got to start on this important part of the, um, the actual landscape. Now for that, I still want to keep fairly cool. Uh, I'm going to use the cobalt violet still to mix it with a little bit of the yellow from earlier. 
and start to just drop that into the background here and it will come into those lines Made the lines a little bit heavy in fact in this case but we'll break into that so all the light misty colors first then like that and we get stronger as we go along now we need the really stronger mix of it which comes right down into here wet into wet glazes finishes here any water dribble down will just soak it off and then as I say it's to do with timing because after this we've got to just make sure that the paint is dry enough that it won't completely run down the paper right now to a slightly deeper colour still to add into that a little bit of purple and a wee bit of the turquoise here see if we can get this lovely blue grey that's going on back here there we are we're going to drop that so that hill comes down drop it into here see the pencil lines as we get darker than now the pencil lines are just starting to vanish so gradually working up our darks the feeling of this lovely soft light wet into wet which, which I do adore much much fresher doing this way I think than glazing and um, glazing can be done beautifully and delicately as as you've seen on some of my other paintings I mean the, for instance the one at the very beginning um, and with the second film where I'm showing the, the boat in the harbour, Bridlington Harbour, the yellow boat the, with the uh, seagulls on it and the boys, and that was nearly all done with, with glazes. It can be absolutely beautiful. A uh, little bit of the yellow to there. Not using it so thinly because I need to, just to cut it back a bit. Get much more the feeling of these hills coming through. Here we go. And we're getting a little bit drier in places. Just letting it glow through at the top there. And after this coat, after this fairy coat now, I've got to um, wait until it dries a bit before I can do any more. It should be quite dark. It comes up into there, underneath that cloud. So we can lift it out with either tissue or the brush. I'll show you with it with the tissue as well. well. I've got some tissue in my hand. Just got that coming down there. Through here. And I shall wait till that dries now and then drop it in a little bit harder. I've just tried it off with a hairdryer a bit. So I should be coming in with harder edges of the same colour now. And if I come up to here and put a glaze of that same colour over. So we've got this soft bit coming up into here and a harder bit, a harder edge there, which I'm going to put on as a hard edge look coming down into there. The same here, a hard edge going up here and just coming through here a little. This is how we get this feeling of the the mountain coming through. Come down here a little bit the same in and round these edges. We're going to soften these back in just a second misty bits coming down here it's right down through there and it's uh, softer around these edges again a little bit harder there and come over and do second coats this will make it harder still a little bit little bit more uh, cobalt blue into it now a little touch of ultramarine in there just to give some more depth against those harder edges. Control and timing. And now I can come back into here and add almost a wet to wet to that. But the same colour I was using earlier, the uh, cobalt violet and the yellow. Just make these colours a little bit stronger down here. Put a little touch of green into that. I don't want to get too dry again on this and overwork it, get too powdery. So that's our 
soft effect there of the clouds coming in. Again, if we want to soften any of the edges, we can still do that. We can still come back here and just soften any of those edges in like that. What we've just done then is this soft area of the hills here. You can see it's quite effective. We'll zoom out and have a go at doing the rest of the work. Right. At the moment I'm just going to continue with this um, brown brush just to show you that if you only have two or three brushes you can make it work. Although I would prefer to have um, the oval mop rather than this large round although we would still want two or three rounds anyway. I would say that if we had a two, a five and an eight or a ten in round, the, oval, the large oval mop and a rigger, you could get away with most things and then you can start getting specialist brushes as we've been discussing for the rest. Now when we come through this texturing here, there are several ways I can do it. We're not putting masking fluid on, otherwise it would have just been done before this stage. But we could put on, we can splatter on white gouache, we could brush on with a textural brush white gouache, or we could use a sponge with a white gouache or white paint. Uh, we'll see how we go. We'll be using a sponge later on uh, on leaves anyway, so I suspect that we're just going to do splatter on this one. Right, we've got our soft areas here, and I want to start building up the light colours behind here and uh, working into those. Again, wetting to wet in the background and gradually getting stronger and putting some glazes over at the end. So let's look at this area here, these light greens first. For my light green, I'm going to make it. So I'm going to use my Oriolin uh, yellow again with a little bit of um, cerulean blue and that gives me this lovely light green here look. Just going to put a little bit more turquoise with that to give me a cooler green to the distance. So look how that wet into wet gives that lovely cool effect against a slightly warmer yellow. And I'm going to bring some of that green as a glaze up into here, just lightly tinting it all the way up here, using the light colours first then. Once I've got this established and I want to work into it wet into wet, it's uh, as I say it's quite, quite a strong yellow green, it tapes down. I haven't stretched the paper, it's a £140 knot I haven't felt a need to stretch it. This is background wash then, variegated wash. You can see how it's granulating in places. Just, just indicating these things in. Just getting background washes. Here, again, we've got a bit of blue. I'll use a bit of um, cobalt and a little bit of the uh, pink there. The um, cobalt violet reflecting from the mountains. There we go. Just reflecting the mountains then. And I wanted a bit more purple so I'm going to add a touch of purple to it. And we'll just see how that goes because we want it darker against the background here. We've got these pine trees coming up here against the A little bit more purple. Perhaps a bit more blue in them as well in the moment. Just a bit more blue there. I just wanted them to be a little bit cooler into the background because it's, um, it's further away from us. So here we go, that's better. Going around these bits of light trees. We've got light against dark here. Which makes that misty effect work better. Now oh, that's coming down drop that blue in a bit more slightly cooler in place so we're, we're variegating these colors as we go along and that comes down into the greens here all the way down to these trees along the bottom of these trees here so I'm using the aureole in now and a bit of viridian yeah, a slightly darker but mid-green. The variations of these greens, leaving the light tips of the trees just showing through there. Strong, much stronger greens happening up through here. This is dried, no it's not, so 
Again, I want to put a few distant trees into there. We'll take some ultramarine. I think that's a lot bluer. These distant trees back here. Don't want them too strong. You can see the misty effect that's happening there. We've got these distant trees here. We're going to let that dry a bit more because they're, they're soft and in the distance at the same time. We've got these warmer trees coming through. I'm gradually darkening into here, giving the effect of the trees just by letting this paint blob and do its own thing. A bit of dry, dry brush work now. We can use the brush tip to start getting the effect of uh, textures of trees here. Get the textures. We could use the rake brushes now, but this is mainly background work, so I'm just going to dry brush across there. Just get the feeling of this stuff coming up through here. Into that I'm going to add just a little bit of the green and a little bit of brown to really make quite a dark green back here. Start dropping that in. Going around the forms to leave the light forms standing out. Again, we want some of those going on to the layers of trees back here. And as I say, it's controlled accident as to how much um, I put paint I put in as, as it's drying. We've got to do this as the thing is drying. Before we start on these areas here as well, because I'm going to go quite dark into those. It'll be a bit warmer in the foreground with the yellow. So I'm going to bring on some of that aureolin yellow as a glaze here. Work that in. Wet into wet, wet next to wet. Let's drag those out. We'll let that dry off that in that area. What we'll do now is come back up to this one and start to do these trees here. Now we've got some nice wet into wet effects there and then we've got a much warmer and uh, plays between warm and, and cool greens there. Let's start with the um, warmer greens. So plenty of burnt sienna. Plenty of ultramarine, so two lovely colours that they do granulate beautifully, these two. And we'll start to make these lovely warm green textures as the twigs and leaves come in quite sharp against the background here. And I'm going to be putting in some more cools here. Into the foreground. Remember, this is where we're going to do the splattering later across this bit. Got some twigs going on down through here, branches are going on down through here as well. Put those in while I'm at it. Burnt sienna and ultramarine. As I say, this is where we're going to be doing the, the splattering shortly. I should make some of these sharper later at the moment, I just want them to, to soften in. And here there's a lovely tree, which we can actually start to grow now. Showing it as a distant, thin wash of the lines put in here at the moment. Right, we shall let that dry back a bit. Go back up into here with some of these greens. A bit of viridian now to drop in. Some of these stronger greens here. Right down through here. Right, I think it's time to let that dry off now before I can do final details. Now I've managed most of this almost entirely with one brush. I'm going to go down just one size now to... Uh, I just want to start picking out a few, a few of the darks now. So I'm going to take some Prussian and again my mixture of, of the Burnt Sienna and the Prussian just to pick out some of these lovely dark branches coming through here. It looks quite strong now but it's going to go lighter as it dries and some of these darker areas across here can just be worked up a bit, just these shadows between the trees. So very very loose, now going a bit tighter just to finish off. I think we're ready now to do our final bits of the um, spl splattering here. So let's look at where we can splatter here. 
Now I don't have a toothbrush at the moment uh, in my set. I could go and use one of my own. What I'm going to use, um, I think I want you to explore with this. Um, I'd, like you to, I'd like you to explore with various brushes and techniques for this. I'm going to use this heavy rake, but I'd like you to try out different brushes, soft and hard. And there's two ways of doing it. We can splatter like this by just doing that. Or we can knock it over something like a um, something hard like another brush or stick like that. I'm going to use the splattering with the finger with is um, just how much water to put with your paint to splatter. So I've mixed up some white, put it on the tip of my brush, and I'm hoping that I'm going to get a nice there we are look a nice splatter there. And the closer I go to it and the heavier the paint, the uh, larger the splatter is going to be. So we can get this lovely effect here. Of now, not only can I do that, of course, I can go in with the brush and be more direct with the brush as well. So I'm going to use both here. I'm going to both splatter and to get this uh, effect of the blossoms. Now, at the same time, if you want, I'm going to. This is acrylic I'm using, but I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. And just make a slight pink with it. Now this is a paint paint remember. So we're putting lights over darks here but we can do that with our paint paints. Anyway there you are. Simple one done, very effective, shows you how it works. And we'll just take a slightly closer look at some of these textures. and how that it all works together. So there's our texture and rough, light against dark, rough against smooth, cool against warm. And you can see how the whole picture is built up of the soft washes and then glazes over the top, the wet into wet, going up into the mist there. And there's our finished little piece of work for you. Now for this next one in the swan, I want to go on to wet and wet reflections and how we can make the rough against the smooth work really well for water. Also there are several ways of doing this water. We're going to paint wet into wet on all of these areas and we're going to put texturing into the wet and here a little bit and then do final texturing with the um, rake brushes and so on uh, for the trees uh, when it's dry, so wet over dry to give harder textural edges. Uh, it's not quite big enough to do the sponge work yet, we'll do that later. Here though I'm going to use a bit of the masking fluid again on the whole of the swan. I could just paint it as is, but it would be easier for me. And there's another chance to show you how the masking can be used. And I'm going to put a few of these little light bits in with the masking fluid. Although the rest of this I'm going to paint leaving the white. I could do that, it's the same. I'm also going to show you about lifting out again with the um, brush as well on these areas. So here we go. I'll start off with the masking fluid, get the masking fluid to shake up first and hopefully if we just drag this here, pressing it ever so gently we'll be able to get some of these very fine line. Now ellipses, these ellipses for these um, ripples, remember that ellipses are never um, sharp at the ends, they're always rounded. When you're drawing your ellipses for bottles or for cups and so on it's better to draw a full ellipse and then rub the rest out otherwise you might get a pointed end and as I say the ellipses are never pointed ends. I've got to let this masking fluid dry totally before I can paint and this time I'm trying not to use the hairdryer on this at all because if I do I know that masking fluid is going to give me a problem again as it did before. And I want slightly ruffled ends here so I'll just Bring that down, a rougher area, dragging 
dragging it down with the needle again. Right, let that dry off now. Oh, I'm going to use a little bit up here as well. Um, for these edges here, just, just to give a bit of uh, more texturing at the edge of the water. While I've got masking fluid in use, I might as well use it a bit more. What little reflections and things that are happening in here. Bits of light on the surface here and there. So our masking fluid is now dry. I haven't used a hairdryer on it this time. Let's see if this masking fluid doesn't give me a problem again. I do hate it when it uh, moulds into the paper like that. OK, we're going to paint this lot in uh, blocks like jigsaws, painting shape by shape by shape. Then we're going to paint that wet into wet. Let's start up here and look at our light colours first. Again, I like to go for my Oriole in yellow. I'm going to just paint that in where the lighter edges are, up here, back here. I've got to do this while it's still wet. And I want to work wet next to wet, wet into wet a bit, and there's variations of colours going on. Right, then we come towards more greens. Take a bit of sap green now. And come in and around here with that. Right down to there, just coming into the tree a bit now. Cools behind here, coming down there, there's a bit more pink. So a little touch of the cobalt violet coming into here and down here. Just let the watercolour do the work for you, look. Back here it goes a lot quieter, a lot softer, a bit of, a little bit of that pink into it. And let these lights shine out over the top as we get darker and darker up here. I don't want to go too sharp with edges so I'm still trying to paint wet into wet as much as I can. Just, just feeling the sunny edges slightly. We've done that very wet into wet there. We just want to pick up on a few shapes here and there as it goes softly mistily into the background and go a little bit stronger in some of these trees here because some of these shapes I'm going to be reflecting later. That's the point. So I need to find them. So it's just starting to dry off a bit now, as you can see. It was all wet into wet, but a little bit more textured. Now what I'm going to do is go back up there and just texture in some more of these leaves. I do want the feeling of trees there and texture there and we'll see why in a moment because I'm deliberately going to make this textural deliberately going to make it textural as compared to the water which is not going to have any texture just wet into wet go right back here and use texture right back into the background not absolutely everywhere but I could use a finer brush for this as well but I'm just going to use this one fine rocks. I could have left them just as um, impressions as I say but I just want to give a little bit of texturing here so it be rough against the smooth and the smooth is going to be the water. I'm going to continue this painting now and I'm going to just use my oval mop um, because I can go broad this way or narrow that way. I can do I reckon I can do anyway this entire painting with just that and we're going to use um, vertical and horizontal strokes a lot of uh, reflective water painting can be done in acrylics, oils and uh, pastels and watercolour by using the vertical strokes first to get the depth and reflections of the water and then horizontal strokes over the top. Obviously with watercolour we've got to consider our lights first, whereas other paints we can put the lights in afterwards. So if I want to have light areas, I've either got to drag them out again, lift them out, or leave dry brushwork. We'll experiment with some of that. First then, I'm going to put water all over this bit right down over where the dark areas are here, across the bird, all the way down here. So that is now soaked. And I've left it dry below this angle here, deliberately. Let's drop in some of these lights, first of all, with the aureole and yellow that we've just been using. Exactly the same way. So where there's a very light area here, I need to do the same here.
It's a great way to do smooth water. Totally different ways for painting rougher water or streams and we're going to look at painting a stream later. And as I'm doing this the paint is gradually drying out. And it's going to go darker and darker. And whilst it's still wet I want to bring in these reflections into here. Just lovely effects we can get with this. Right along the base there. A bit sharper against that edge. Start working darker in yet again. Starting to get these reflections coming down from the trees here. So very dark here now. Nice big strokes of the purple and the blues. Very defined strokes now coming up one into another. Dry that brush off and we'll just drag it across a bit to get a bit of dry brush work. A bit more brown into that to make some of those trees a little bit warmer. Not that. Just to lift out in places and start to get some of these light areas. Still wet. I'm just going to work in a bit more of the areas here. Clean, clean water just into this. Just drag some of this colour out and in. Light against dark, dark against light. I want to put some harder edges into some of these ripples once this has dried shortly. Right, I'm hoping that the uh, light's a bit better now. Um, it's still bright, but at least it's even on the paper. We've uh, got to the stage now of um, doing the final work on it. You can see how these effects have all levelled out. And I want to be able to get off this masking fluid, but it's still I'm not happy with this masking fluid at all. It uh, hasn't been put under the hair dryer this time, but it just refuses to come off this paper. I think you can see the effect we should have had from the masking fluid, although it's just left a mucky, gunky area. Um, as I say, I've had problems with this particular type of masking fluid before, and it must be the sunlight that's affecting it, because I have had it working quite well when it's cool. So what I'm going to do is just go over this with acrylic paint, which is not what I'd normally do, a thin coat of it, and then try and work over that to show you how it would have come out. Not ideal, and um, so you have at least seen the masking fluid working earlier, um, but even then it wasn't as successful as it should have been. So I'm just painting in a bit of fine acrylic on top of this to try and rescue it. So we could do this anyway with um, gouache, so at least it shows you how we could have worked the white if we weren't doing masking. But I would have had a much sharper, nicer edge if the masking fluid has worked as it should have done. It's quite interesting, but it doesn't work in the same sharp, clear way, which is unfortunate. But it shows you the dangers of getting materials when they go wrong and how you can bring things back using mixed media as well. Anyway, I can bring it back with this, as you can see, and you can see these light areas would have been how it was meant to be if the masking fluid had worked. Waving of the reflections and the ripples. So we haven't got these lovely sharp light edges that I wanted, but I think I can make it work for you so you can at least see how this painting would have worked. So I've brought some of the whites back now. Okay, now I'm going to treat it as I would have done the original swan. And I may have to work slightly differently over the swan itself because I've been using acrylic there. So now I'm going to go back to my all right. So now I'm going to go back to one of my round brushes and uh, try and touch this up and get these lovely dark greens in. So I'm going to take Iridian and a little bit of sap green and add a bit of purple to that of uh, ultramarine blue me a lovely dark ripple and let's now try and bring in these as I was this is what I was going to do originally for you at this stage bring in these beautiful ripples here but these are going to be hard edge now against the water we've got the soft edges and this is going to give me this lovely effect of, of ripples and water across this so a bit more carefully now, not quite so loose and wet into wet as I bring these ripples up and through here. It's going to be the same round the swan. I've got to just, now I don't know how well this watercolour is going to take with the acrylics, but we'll give it a go. That's not doing too badly because I've used it fairly thinly, just resisting a bit, but the paint is still slightly wet, the acrylic paint, so that means that I can 
just bring it into it just underneath and uh, then the smaller reflections coming through we can bring those through again so the masking fluid would have left these darks that I'd painted originally I've lost these lovely lights here now but oh, well, we're not doing too badly it's turning into a painting again so we've got the lights coming into the darks and the darks coming into the lights so the, the lights come into the darks here and then the darks here come into the lights here so I've lost my whites almost completely there, so I'm going to have to come back and try a few more because the acrylic is sinking, it's not giving that beautiful sharp one. So acrylic and watercolour. I suppose it's turned into another lesson, a completely different lesson. We've got one or two little touches of white here and there in the background because we lost those when we did the masking fluid again. Indigo. Just see if I can pick out the, the dark here on the peak of the swan. Where the eye should come just here. Maybe pushing my luck a bit, but just feel we need to pick that out as a fraction there. And so we've got our texturing there and our smooth work here. Um, as I say, this should give you an idea of how we can use the texturing against the wet in wet. Just to bring back some of these darks just a bit. Not quite happy with those, so a little bit of the Prussian and the brown again. Just to look how some of these branches, which are a bit sharper, come reflecting down into the wall. We've used acrylic. Let's make it a mixed media. I actually use a little bit of pastel here as well, a bit of white pastel just to try and bring back some of the highlights in it as well. So not an ideal uh, example but I will be able to show you that. Fortunately I'm going to do something a bit similar with the waters later so I will be able to show you again later. Anyway there we are. I had to make do with uh, botching it up at the end and we'll get some different masking fluid at least you know how it works and how it should work I just wouldn't use, I wouldn't recommend that make if you're anywhere near sunlight